You're from Melanie. <laughs> so this is what happens when I get given a car by Auto Trader, a tank of gas, and a celebrity that I absolutely love to hang out with and have a chat with. We kind of took feminism and made it more palatable to, to young people. And what happens off the back of that chat? Well, you get to see it all. <laughs> no, you did not. I did. In the 90s, there were a couple of cars that definitely elevated you in terms of just how cool you appeared. And today, I get to drive around in one of those cars. I am in a bright blue Subaru with a spoiler the size of my youngest niece. It's ridiculous, it's cool, and it doesn't get more 90s than this, and I am loving it. And the reason that I'm so excited is because today, I'm quite literally picking up a 90s legend. I'm on my way to collect Melanie C. Yeah, Sporty Spice from the Spice Girls. You're from Melanie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the flashy Subaru. Hey, buddy, How are you right? doing? I'm so good. Love How's to it going? see you. Yeah, good, man. Thank you so much for uh, for hopping in my shiny blue, uh, spoiled out Subaru. Yeah, uh, do you this like boy it? Race has come to pick me up. Kind of, yeah. Like, Who's that dude? Uh, so is this like us going on a, a weird 90s first date? Is that what this feels <laughs> like at the moment? <laughs> a little bit. I, I didn't really know any boys. Well, the only boy I knew with this car was my, my little brother. Because I bought him this, That's not this amazing. exact car, but yeah, this a blue Subaru Impreza. The thing is with my brother, he, I mean, he's always been super obsessed with cars since he was like tiny. Yeah. And he went on to become a racing car driver. Look at that. Yeah, which is amazing. Wow. And, you know, I come from a working class background and, you know, it's, it's a really expensive sport. Yeah. But after what happened to me, I, you know, I... I wanted to help him. I've, I'd achieved my dream, my wildest dreams, and I wanted to help him do the same. That's a really strange way of framing it, what happened to you. I mean, being 20 years old and yeah. being known globally, it's not something that many people get to experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. But learning how to drive during <laughs> that moment must have been one of the worst things as well, because you didn't actually have a license when the band blew up, right? So, so what was that like? Yeah. It was a little added pressure. <laughs> I'd get picked up by my driving instructor <laughs> in his little Metro or <laughs> Fiat Uno, whatever nice. it was. Yeah. And yeah, we'd, we'd, you know, pootle around North London. And, like lots of people would be like, that, you know, is that, is that, <laughs> is that, is that, that's amazing. And I was taking the wing mirrors out. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I imagine that the girls at that time must have all been getting super flashy cars because they had the money to, right? Well, so what, what, what did you do? Because you, you know just what? passed. Yeah, did you want to do the same thing? Yeah, no, it's funny because obviously, you know, all of our backgrounds, I mean, you know, they, they varied slightly, but, Pretty you know, predominantly class, right? we were working class, right? Yeah. And so we had these aspirations, but they, it's really cute looking back. I remember um, Emma always wanted, was it called a Vitara? A Jeep? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a Jeep. Su Suzuki. A Suzuki, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think it was like secondhand as well, but no. that was like her dream car, yeah, so right. she got it. Right, right. right. And what did, it, like Victoria was always, she was more posh on every level, Amazing. you know. Uh, she wore better clothes, she had a better car, but what did she get? Oh, God, she had like a little two-seater sporty number. Yeah. Um, Jerry always wanted a classic. She had an MG... BGT. Um, it was MG Metro, a little right, red, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, a little yeah, roadster yeah. thing, which was lovely. A little hexagon badge yeah. on the front, I remember Mel that. had an Alfa Romeo. Very nice. You know, so we weren't like... We weren't going crazy, you know, we weren't getting, you know. Lamborghinis. Yeah, really. exactly. That came later. It was kind of cute. <laughs> when you look back, that's cute, isn't it? It's really nice. Yeah. So I, I treated myself to a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> no, you did not. I did. Was it an XR Ford Fiesta? No, or was I it just think a stock? It was just a yeah. Was it a one point standard? One? Probably. Yeah. Oh my god. I actually I can't remember whether I bought it. I think I bought it and then gave it to my granddad. Right. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> I've had quite a few cars. I once I realised I can buy a really nice car. I can afford one now. Hang on a second. How long did it take you to realise <laughs> that you could yeah. afford a really nice car? But I car? think I had to be sensible in that I needed to be a confident driver before I did that, you right. know? Now my, my first proper car, what I've called a proper car, mm. no disrespect, Ford Fiesta, I did love you, um, was, uh, it was a BMW, I think it was a 318 injection. Was, was it? <laughs> they were lovely. They were fun, I yeah. love that car. Yeah, me too. And then, yep, yeah, family cars and... I, I do triathlons. I've not done one for a couple of years. No way, but I, really? Yeah, so wow. I, I like to chuck my bike in the back of the car. So I kind of, I ashamedly got into the four by four, became, you know, one of those mums with the Chelsea tractor. Um, and I actually, I've got a, a Lexus hybrid and I've had it for 11 years. No way. Yeah, that's been brilliant. But it's funny because my car is 
my office. <laughs> you know, often it's it's like a cafe. Yeah. You know, many meals are eaten in my car. And I blame the kids for it smelling a little bit like a dustbin. Okay. Well, really, it's my fault. <laughs> I do love my car. It's, I think you, you have a relationship with your car, yeah. don't you? It becomes like your friend, mm. you know, your confidant. A lot happens in there. <laughs> I, I find my, yeah, exactly. I'm going to tell you all the things that have happened no, in the car. <laughs> some dark stuff has happened in my car over the years. But, you know, everything does happen in there. You know, sometimes, you know, you might be having a little cry, a cheeky cry in your car. Oh, my it gosh. It all happens. Yeah. Do you know what I do in my car, which I'm, I'm sure people have clocked me doing this? Sometimes, if I'm on my way to like a session or rehearsals or something, I'll do my singing warm up in the car. No way. Yeah. When you think back to when it all began and when you were at the center of this whirlwind that was the Spice Girls, now with the amount of distance that you have from that moment, what do you what do you most remember? Well, it's really been interesting growing up being a Spice Girl. Obviously, at the time, it was incredible. It was bizarre. Yeah, it was yeah. surreal. Yeah. And as, as time went on, it, it's kind of changed. And now, I love being a Spice Girl probably more than ever. Really? Yeah. And I think because so many of our fans are now adults. They've grown and up I, with and you. I, yeah. And I meet them in everyday life. I work with people. You know, I work, whether it's you know being interviews, yeah. or, you know, going into radio stations by a journalist, whether I'm out doing shopping with my little girl. People approach me all the time. And the other girls, you know, we have this conversation that so many people were inspired by what we did, mm. you know, and, and it empowered them in so many ways. Yeah. And it, we're just so incredibly proud because at the time we knew it was massive, you know, we were in the middle of it, in the eye of the storm. Mm. But it's not been until, say, like the last decade, we've really realized the impact of it course. had on a generation. What would you say the connection between something like Girl Power and the Me Too movement and Time's Up movement actually might be? Yeah, I, I, I think in, in some ways it's kind of an evolution. Um, you know, before the Spice Girls, you know, uh, feminists have been around, you know, for, for centuries course, yeah. and, you know, and it's always been there and, and you know, I don't think there'll ever be a day, you know, I would love to say there'll be a day when there's equality for all, you know, whether it's gender, race, everything, but we definitely have made leaps in the right direction and I think, yeah, I think the Spice Girls just, it just helped, you know, made it more accessible to a younger generation. Um, and yeah, I hope it's empowered people. I, I think we started shouting about girl power, but we quite quickly realised it was about people power. You know, we have lots of fans in the LGBT community and it's lovely because so many people have approached me and, and talked about how being a fan of the Spice Girls, you know, made them feel like they were part of something when they right. felt very isolated wow. and also gave them the courage to even come out to their family and friends and give me goosebumps even recounting it you know it's it's amazing the effect that something you know that we just love doing and we're having great fun doing did really powerful important pe things for people and lots of people the world over as well yeah now one of my first interviews uh, around the age of about 13 was with you guys um, so yeah, as you <laughs> released we'll your nice. first, you were lovely. <laughs> you scared the crap you out of me. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I think we still do fight people. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13, I was this little prepubescent boy. I think Emma was the youngest. Emma is the youngest, yeah, right? Yeah. So she was in her late teens. Yeah. But you were all in your early 20s. Early 20s, yeah. So what was it like for you guys being that age and your life's changing so much? There were so many incredible things with, with having that success. But that, you know, it, it, there's like everything, there's downsides. You know, it's hard. You know the basics it's hard being away from your family and your friends you know we travel so much and and to become that successful and to maintain that success takes an incredible amount of work mm. so we were away a lot yeah loads of traveling you know thank god we were in an international band which means a hell of a lot more work mm. you know going to all those territories but it was things like uh, getting used to reading people's opinions about you or Oof. hearing people not being very kind about you on TV, on the radio. Having things like your appearance yeah. and your weight mm -hmm. and your wardrobe being discussed, how, how difficult was it to deal with at that age? It was really difficult and it, and it affected me in quite a negative way, actually. That's when I, I started to, to not eat properly, actually. And, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a complex thing. I think there are many reasons how you can get yourself into these situations. Mm. Um, 
and for me it was a little bit of control obviously my life com was completely out of control because it wasn't in my hands yeah. you know um so me controlling my food i became very obsessive with exercise uh, you know and i'm not going to lie a lot of it was vanity you know yeah. i wanted to look a certain way i felt like i had to look a certain way yeah um and yeah i got to this point i was in la it was a millennium actually i was there with my family and and i I just, I just didn't want to get out of bed. I was crying a lot. Wow. I just felt really low, really lethargic. And I, I just thought, you know, there's something wrong with me. Um, I, need to, I need to get this sorted out. And, and I went, when I got home to the UK, I went to my GP and I just said, you know, I told him a few things. And it was, it was the first time actually I'd, I'd spoken out loud about um, my eating disorder and it was something I was very embarrassed about I was, mm. even though it was so obvious to the people around me what was going on yeah, you know for me to actually admit it and say those words out loud um, it was very difficult um, and my doctor said to me well the first thing we have to address is your depression and I never ever considered I had depressed. depression me? I would be depressed right. you know I was always a really happy-go-lucky kid yeah. I was always really positive and I just didn't think it would happen to me yeah. but when he said it there was a huge sense of relief really? because I was like it has a name it's a thing it can be treated mm. you know I can get better and that was my first step towards recovery and I I took antidepressants for 18 months um, wow which which was hard because you know I, I, I try not to take medication you know I try to do things naturally but I knew I needed help and I knew I couldn't do it on my own so I took them along with that I had talking therapy for the first time it was a long road and I think in the beginning it was it was a good day here and there and then a good day would turn into a couple of good days and then yeah. I'd go a couple of weeks and go oh, I've not had a good day I've not had a bad day about that yeah. and I think the really important thing to bear in mind when you go through something like that is that you can heal and what I've also learned is you know personally for me I can't be arrogant enough to think that it's gone away forever I feel like depression for me often is lurking in the wings hmm. but I have to acknowledge it yes and and I just have to really look after myself if I feel it coming then I make sure I'm getting enough sleep. I make sure I'm eating properly. I make sure I'm doing, you know, some exercise, getting yeah. some fresh air and people, seeing people. You talk about some of the harder moments and some of the darker times, but also there is this amazing sort of twinkle in your eye where you talk about some of the good times. Yeah. Um, how are you able to strike that balance now? I think it's with age, you know, with a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of hindsight yeah. and you know and, and with a bit of healing as well and um, I did go to do some really difficult times and um, yeah I think as, as you get older you just become more grateful for the good stuff and more grateful for the bad stuff mm. you know and kind of just grow and learn from that I can't even begin to imagine what you experienced internally through the journey that you've been on yeah um, not just the journey you've been on with me in the car today <laughs> because this has been one hell of a journey in this car Jesus um, but no thank you so much for finding the time to speak to oh, me today. it's my pleasure I've I really really it. enjoyed it this will do me perfect thank Squeeze you very here. much try not Wonderful to scratch to my spoiler you. as well yeah watch these bikes <laughs> see you soon thank you so much Mwah. take care babe. you too bye bye see ya see ya so I didn't have the most favorable things in the world to say about this car at the beginning of the day, but it impressed the Spice Girl. And because it did that, it's all right with me. Now remember, all you have to do is hit like and subscribe for more of this kind of good stuff. See you soon. <laughs> Look who it is. Hi. <laughs> Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Not me, Reggie. <laughs>